No, I mean, I really like it. I mean, it's comfortable. These, you know, the straps feel good, supportive. I'm describing a bra, aren't I? I'll just quote while I'm ahead. Hey guys, welcome to Gear Tasting. First off today, I wanted to talk about binoculars. I know I've talked about that a little bit in the past, but I've just finally acquired, I guess, the grail of my binoculars I've been trying to find for a while at a decent price on eBay. And those are the M22 binoculars, and they're manufactured by a couple of different companies. So this is Fujinon, Fujinon, I don't know how you say that. Um, let's just say Fuji. So Fuji makes these, and they're also made by Steiner, who Steiner makes these other binoculars that I have, but the, uh, the specs on these binoculars are they're 7x50, so if you remember from previous discussions on binoculars and focal length and stuff like that, the 7 is the, the actual magnification of the binoculars, so you see the 7x50 written here on the binoculars, so you've got a 7x magnification and the... Um, the lens aperture here on the end is 50 millimeters, so that's a 50 millimeter lens. So the magnification, and we'll talk about the kill flashes here in a second, so the magnification isn't necessarily always the thing you want to focus on when you're looking at binoculars. It may be something you're, you need to focus on for like a spotting scope when you're shooting, or something like a scope, you know, when you're actually attaching it to a gun and you know, firing from, but when you're talking about binoculars, Binoculars are typically used to observe. They're not really, you're not going to call a, you know, call a miss or call a correction for, you know, uh, elevation with binoculars more than likely. So it's tough to stabilize binoculars. There are stabilizing binoculars out there, like Canon makes a great stabilizing binocular, and I've yet to go down that rabbit hole of stabilizing binoculars. Maybe one of these days I will, now that I've kind of completed my binoculars collection. The ones I don't have here in front of me are the M24 binoculars. Those are at home and I forgot to bring them today, but um, they also have kill flashes on there and they're a little bit smaller than even the uh, 6x30s. I think these are 6x30. Yeah, these are like the military marine Steiner's 6x30s. So again, 6x magnification, 30 millimeter um, objective there. So the you know, I also like that the ocular has, you know, independent eye relief adjustments, so you can adjust to your, your preferred, uh, I guess, clarity of vision when you're looking through them. Um, but I've talked about these kill flashes before, and these are, the kill flashes for the M22 binoculars are huge, and they're also super cheap on eBay right now. There's a bunch of people selling them. I think I got these for like 10 bucks, and the great thing was that we talked about how they fit onto... Um, this, the spotting scope that I have, so that that Bushnell Legend tactical scope that I've used during that MAM sniper challenge. You know, we talked about that being able to uh, fit one of these too. So the try not to spill my coffee. This can actually fit over the end of this too. It takes a little bit of work, but it does fit. I won't mess with that right now, but um, that's an option too if you want to pick some of these up. But you know, the Tenebrex makes the kill flashes, and you know, the point of the kill flash is to eliminate any reflection that could be a telltale sign of your position or where you're at. So you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of not a necessity for most people out there, but um, obviously it adds quite a bit of bulk on them too. But that's uh, an option for you. So the other thing I did is with chunkier, bigger binoculars like this, um, just putting them on a strap like this, you know, it's, it's not bad with these because they're pretty lightweight, but as you get into heavier binoculars, especially with these kill flashes on there, it becomes a little difficult to wear it on your neck because it starts to strain your neck and cut into it or whatever. And you could always get a bigger padded strap attachment or something like that, but I've opted to try out binocular harnesses, I guess is what you'd call it. But so I kind of scoured eBay and I found a product from, uh, not eBay, uh, Amazon. I found a product from iSky, iSki, iSki, you ski. We all ski for iSki. So it's a strap system that I've kind of done some rough adjustments on. So you kind of put it on like a, uh, like a shoulder holster and you take the, 
strap mounting points and you can route it through your lens cover like this too. So most lens covers on the Steiners and stuff like that. I like Steiner because they have two um, points where the cover runs through, whereas this just has one and it, I, don't, I don't really like just having one. But anyway, you run these uh, smaller straps that it comes with you know, back through the retaining clips and there's one male and one female side of these, this buckle system and they basically dock in to the respective sides here. Make sure there's no twists in here. So then what you've got is kind of a, a shoulder holster type system to mount your binoculars to. So, you know, when you're going hands free, you're not, you know, straining with that weight around your neck. So I'm still kind of messing around with this. Obviously, I haven't cut these and made them look a little better yet, but I wanted to make sure the, you know, the, the positioning was right for where I wanted them to be. And obviously, if I was wearing heavier clothing and stuff, I would adjust this out. So there is quite a bit of adjustment in these shoulder straps. I just have them kind of cinched down for proper positioning right now. But I, I like the setup, so I'm going to keep tweaking it and kind of see how I, how I like it moving forward. But, you know, I first question why they did a, a male-female combo the way they did, but it makes sense because you can also clip these together at this point, and now you've at least got a, a strap to carry them by or something. Um, so you can't really necessarily put this around your neck but it does give you another way to carry them. So that's just kind of the, uh, the spot I'm at with binoculars right now. Obviously, you know, comparatively speaking, binocular size, these are Changa binoculars and probably more than most people need. I was observing the, the cemetery like across the street and I could, you know, watch cars and people and not that I was doing anything creepy like watching graves or something. But anyway, let's just, let's just end that segment. All right, so next up I wanted to talk about something I'm pretty excited about getting in, and that's the fire pen. So I had to look around for these quite a bit because they're made, I think, in Russia. But actually, Baltic Innovation Holding. So I think that's in the Baltic Sea, I would imagine, somewhere near there. So probably Russia. Anyhow, these are kind of a cool breaching tool. And you essentially take, they come in these sleeves, and this is the actual cutting rod itself. So you have to light the cutting rod which it, with a special match. You can't just light it with any regular lighter. But you, you store it in the fire pen like this once you remove it from the protective sleeve. And the reason they come in these protective sleeves is so you don't do something stupid like I did and start messing with it and it snaps because I guess they're fairly brittle and kind of ruined one. To do that. But anyhow, don't take them out of their protective coverings until you, I guess, need to. But you're supposed to be able to store them inverted like this inside, um, inside each of the sleeves, and they are pretty stable within that. And inside of these things, I already pulled this one out, this is the match right here. So if I were to take this little rubber band off, probably a Russian rubber band, this is the big crazy Changa match that it comes with. And this is the striker, which I'm a little nervous about the striker because it's kind of bubbling up a little bit and I'm worried that, you know, carrying these in a backpack or something, you might lose that. But um, they do burn super hot. So the, the premise behind these is that you can cut things like chain link or something if you had to get into somewhere. Uh, if you had to, to cut through some metal, you could do that with a fire pen. So essentially, like I was saying, flip this around like this put it into here, strike your match, and then light it, and now you've got basically a, a cutting torch. And you can, I guess, continue to swap these out, but the danger in these is multiple dangers in these, Will Robinson. But the first one is, uh, is that you can't put it out. So you can't just dump water on this thing and extinguish it. You really have to have something like a, a sand trap to, to push this into once it gets ignited. And, I would love to demonstrate one of these on video, and I, oh, I hope we can get around to that one of these days, but I want to find some old steel or something like that to cut and do it in a safe place. Controlled environment, obviously necessary. Um, and the other thing that's a danger with these, or the other two things, um, is obviously the, the light coming off of this. Anybody that's done welding and is wearing, has worn a welding mask knows that the, uh, the light output on these can burn your retinas. So, they say that they're safe to use with sunglasses, but I don't really 
feel comfortable just wearing sunglasses for some reason, I'd at least want to wear some sunglasses that are welding rated or something like that. I'm pretty sure I've seen stuff like that out there. But um, so what it says on here is that fire pen cuts metal products and constructions, armature pipes, steel ropes, cables, and steel sheets. Uh, weight is 100 grams. Combustion temperature is 2800 degrees Kelvin. I don't know what that works out to in Fahrenheit, but it's damn hot. Uh, time of combustion is 20 seconds. Model cannot be extinguished. Consult operation manual before use. So if anybody's interested in these things, uh, the website is firepen.eu. And I can't remember where I got these from, but it, I found a United States dealer that was selling them, so importing them over and, and selling them. They're not cheap. Um, I can't remember. I think they were somewhere like 30 bucks a piece, or f I don't think they were 40, but 30 sounds right to me, like $29.99. And obviously I'd I'm already down one, which sucks. But anyway, it is what it is. So I had to break that to teach you guys, if you get them, not to do that. <laughs> but so here's the match. Um, again, so once you have one of these things, the match is kind of stored um, strike side down in this chamber. And then you can insert the, the fire rod for storage. And that's how you can carry them around. And hopefully eventually soon we will demonstrate one of these on gear tasting. All right, let's do some questions over coffee. I got a few of them today. First one comes from Michael from Twitter. In some photos of your ETA trauma kit pouch, you have a soft T wide tourniquet attached to the side, but I can't figure out how to do this exactly. Was hoping you could show or demonstrate how to do that. Absolutely. Glad to show that. So I have one of the soft T wide tourniquets. Um, pull this chest rig because it's got a pouch already on it. I can demonstrate that. So the deal with this is on our ETA trauma kit pouches, we sew these two channels of POWs webbing, essentially, Molly, for those of you that get technical, or technically, the technical definition is POWs. This is Molly. So this is a flat folded tourniquet. We've demonstrated how to flat fold before. Um, this was something I came up with a long time ago, and it really saves space on soft T wide tourniquets. Um, they recently changed the buckle design, so this buckle design on the Soft T-Wide has changed since this iteration, but there's no reason to re replace this tourniquet because it's never been used. So what you want to do is on the side of our trauma kit pouches, I like to use the, um, the back channel of this. So what I'm going to do is take both of these rubber bands. So the Soft T-Wide tourniquet comes with two uh, UV protected, protected, I guess, uh, rubber bands so they will not wear out in the sun. So what I do is I take my finger, so I've got both rubber bands looped through one channel, I take my finger to hold it and then I go ahead and push these rubber bands through the bottom like so. I can take my other finger and hold it. So now I've got two points of contact transfer that and now this goes mount it this way so two of them top goes here and the bottom now hooks over the bottom of the tourniquet and that is a way to mount it so I like mounting it to the back channel um, if I've got the space on a chest rig or something like that but you can also mount it a little forward too and that'll help give it the, a, more of the profile for the actual pouch itself too. So that's how to mount one of these soft T wide tourniquets to one of our ETA trauma kit pouches. All right, next question comes to us from John C via email. First of all, thanks for the videos. I enjoy them. Also, you've cost me about $1,500 after you introduced me to Arteryx clothing. My question is why do the American YouTube channels talk about, oh, why do the American YouTube channels talk about good and bad ammunition? Doesn't it all do the same job? So there, are a, there is a lot of talk about ammunition out there. And a lot of it has to do with 
uh, ballistic coefficients, so the BC value of ammo, particularly in long range shooting, that really plays into what you're going to be able to do with that given platform or the, the weapon system. So um, that's where I really get into the nitty gritty of ammo. Um, when you're talking about, you know, comparing nine millimeter ammo, unless you're dealing with a home defense type round versus a standard round and you're actually seeing, uh, you're shooting like ballistics gel and you're actually seeing the, uh, the expansion of the bullet as it impacts, there's really, there's really not a whole lot of comparison. Yes, different grains will do different things and that's important to pay attention to, but as a whole, I really just look for quality ammunition if I'm, I'm buying range ammo or something like that. So I want brass case stuff only because I want the potential of being able to pick up my brass and reload it. I've never done that yet in all the years I've been shooting, so I don't know why I even still bother with that, but that does cycle better through some guns, so brass ammo tends to be favored um, in lieu of like a, like a wolf ammo that does not have brass case. Um, so there are cheaper ammos out there, and that's kind of what I try to stay away from. I try to find a good quality brass cased ammo uh, when I'm shooting something like 5.56 or 9mm. So hopefully that helps you. Um, even with AK stuff, I can touch on that briefly. I know that with either 5.45 ammo or 7.62 ammo in an AK, you're, I also try to look for brass case when I can, but the AK is more of a reliable weapon system. And uh, it's about to do a Russian accent, but <laughs> I'll save that for later. Um, my Boris accent. Anyway. Um, but you're really still okay with uh, regular, you know, non-brass case ammo too. I can't think of the word for that, but anyway. So hopefully that answers your question. Let's just move on to the next question. <laughs> uh, Mark P asks over email, do you have a lead on any place that sells mass gray gear? Once you enlighten me with the color, the collaboration of the uh, ITS hoodie uh, makes much more sense now and I'm hooked on that colorway. Yeah, um, I've talked a lot about LBT gear in the past. Um, this is the this is the mass gray stuff that they make, and that's really there's really only LBT out there making this stuff right now in in mass gray colorway. And again, their mass gray comes from the mass suit or the maritime assault suit, and that sepia colorway. Um, they just started producing gear in it because they had government contracts doing it, and it was. They offered some you know, kit to consumers and it was such a good reception that they started making small runs of stuff. And you'll see sales, especially during the sales they run on LBT, you'll see mask gray gear offered. Sometimes during the downtime between sales or between holidays, they won't really have much for sale, but um, definitely look back on LBT during like uh, sale times. I think they did something big for Black Friday and there was also some mask gray gear in there too. But, um, there really isn't a lot out there in terms of you know clothing. That's where we're hoping to uh, corner the market with with our with our hoodies. But um, yeah, LBT stuff. That's probably what you're looking at as the option for mass gray. All right, you guys can stop yelling at me now. Rob told me it was steel cased ammo, so yeah, that's what I was missing. Anyway, thanks for watching Gear Tasting. Remember to use the pound tag Gear Tasting on any social media network if you have questions. You can also email them in or send them in via snail mail. We've had that happen before too. So get your questions in. We'll get them answered here on the show. And I want to encourage everybody watching to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I know that sounds petty and like they're just trying to build and pad numbers, but we're really not. The more subscribers we get, the more that the videos are shown to more people and the more we can grow our presence on YouTube and eventually produce better content and get Rob some better equipment um, to record on but actually it is better than it used to be. <laughs> He's got a steady cam out now, so um, we're getting up there. But anyway, subscribe if you're watching the video. We would love your subscription. Um, you'll also get notified, and I've been told, what was the thing we were, ring the bell? So yeah, so apparently there's this thing with YouTube where when you subscribe, you can ring the bell. And to me, ring the bell means to quit, and I don't really want to encourage you guys to quit at anything in your life. So check the little thing that gives you notifications. Let's just call it that. So anyway, thanks for your subscription. If you're subscribed, you've subscribed already. And as always, we have a Patreon channel now, patreon.com slash ITS tactical. We've got some rewards for different levels of backing. If you'd like to contribute that way to our content here on gear tasting. Thanks for watching.